Well, Papa, what are your emotions after that? Are you pleased that you're able to get the goal back and salvage a point? Or are you disappointed that you maybe should have had two, three or four and not celebrating three? Yeah, probably a mixture of um, all different emotions because, yeah, frustration at um, not converting opportunities, um, but happy we're creating opportunities. Um, happy with the character shown to come from a goal behind. It's a team that does very well when they're in front, uh, that's proven. Um, so we've shown a lot of improvements um, in that area and um, you know, a lot, a lot of shots, a lot of attempts against a very good team. Uh, we've played it. The last two teams we've played, they've both had a full week. You know, they get that their preparation has been better than ours. Um, we looked a little bit heavy-legged, but I think uh, second half, you know, we played a good match and their keeper had a great game. It's that. Um Pleasure magnified by the fact that you did all that without Ben Falami and Nick D'Agostino in the team? Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, there, there are a lot of positives. There are a lot of positives, you know, and, uh, you know, we, we should have scored just before half time, right on half time. And then we conceded a minute after half time. So um, there's a big shift uh, in the dynamic of the game. Um, so we had to forget that quickly and maybe it shows how far the team has come or the club. You know, we, um, we kept our structure, we, we kept disciplined, uh, we kept going forward and um, you know, the belief was there. So, uh, and, you know, they're always dangerous on the break, of course, uh, when they're leading, that's, the, that's a real strength of theirs. But, you know, we scored, could have had more. Um, in the end, we, we take the point. What was your instructions to the team when Weston got that goal? Because you certainly almost immediately afterwards took it to another level. Was that the boys responding or did you change the instructions? No, the instructions were the same. I think that just shows how far they've come. You, know, they're, they're, you can see there is a lot of belief in the group. Um, you know, they've maybe last year, that's a game that, you know, we as a club lose uh, and maybe lose it well, lose it comfortably. So you can see that... Uh, you know, there was a lot of belief in the group that we can come back. Uh, we created some wonderful openings. Um, their keeper had a great game, made some fantastic saves, and that can happen. But we kept humming and, and probing, and um, you know, in the end, um, we definitely got a deserved uh, goal. Just on that, um, Marco Rojas um, obviously was the only one of that sort of starting um, forward group that you had. It felt like it feels like he's been going from strength to strength after a couple of tough years. I mean, how have you? seen him across this season and tonight as well obviously yeah I thought second half he really stood up um, first half was a little bit you know it was a difficult match it wasn't much happening in the game but um, I think that, that's expected in a, in a tight game and the, and then it's a the moment you know we had our moment just for half time a, a clear opening um, they took theirs you know off a off a corner uh, and then you have to show the character required and Marco helped us uh, really um, be on the front foot and yeah, that's his first 90 minutes since I've been here. So it, it shows it's been a slow uh, process, uh, but you know, he had a good game against Melbourne City. I thought second half he really stood up today uh, and you know, we want more of this. You know, we want Marco Rojas uh, to deliver this week in, week out and uh, you know, he'll get a lot of confidence from that and you know, he's disappointed in the change room because he felt he should have scored a few goals today, um, but um, you know, hopefully he can do that on Sunday for us. I mean, for Marco, did you mention he's had this is his first 90 minutes in quite some time, but I guess just for him personally and also for you guys going forward, him finally now almost getting past that initial hump of not playing a lot of 90 minutes, you know, how good is it to see him he's actually got to that point where he can get through 90 minutes unblemished? Yeah, it's very pleasing. You know, we, we've had to uh, look after him and, and understand his body and what he can do and you know, we would have loved to have seen him play 90 minutes six weeks ago. Um, but that would be uh, very selfish on our part. And, and hopefully this process will enable him to be more consistent and play longer minutes for the rest of the year. And if that happens, well, then um, we'll all be happy and delighted because I'm sure Marco will score a lot more goals and, and set up a lot more goals uh, as we move forward. So. Um, you know, it's a short turnaround as well, and he's, he's played two good matches.
So, um, yeah, happy for him. Just a comment on Lee. I mean, special occasion today, 350th game. Um, I mean, what, how, how, you know, just a comment on him as a person, I mean, him around the, the change rooms and everything, I guess, seeing him have that moment today, I guess, how special was that? Yeah, I, you know, I've always uh, watched him from afar and, and seen him play all the various positions on the field and, and always do a good job for Melbourne Victory and uh, used to frustrate me a lot. And then um, now I've got the opportunity to to coach him, to coach the person first and foremost, and yeah, a, a wonderful human being. And um, yeah, it's, he's a credit to himself and his family, and uh, and also a credit uh, to the football club to have him here for so long. And you know, hopefully he'll be for here for a very long time in whatever capacity that is. But we need to keep him involved in the club when that day comes that he stops. Uh, but for now, um, I'm happy with how he's playing. Uh, he's, he's certainly contributing and.